Hi Rockridge, this is Mrs. Berger and today we are kicking off Unit 7. Today's discussion will be on exponential graphs and their transformations. So exponential functions and the functions that we'll need to be graphing today are easily identifiable anytime you see a variable in the exponent with some number as the base, you're looking at an exponential function. So y equals 2 to the power of x is an exponential function because that x is up there in the exponent. f of x equals uh, 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2. That's an exponential function because again x is up there in the exponent. It just happens that 3 is our base g of x equals 10 to the power of, I don't know, x plus 1. That's another exponential function. The number 10 is being brought to the power of x plus 1. That exponential, uh, that exponent having a variable, that makes it an exponential function. So a question for you, are these exponential functions considered polynomials? Remember what the definition of a polynomial is. That's when you have whole numbers as your exponents, right? A quadratic is a polynomial because it's to the power of 2. A cubic is a polynomial because it's to the power of 3. A quartic is a polynomial because it's to the power of 4. But remember what aren't um, considered polynomials, those are things that have um, non-whole numbers like 2, 3, 4 as the exponents, right? And so the answer to this is no. Variable as exponent means not a polynomial, right? We're only supposed to have whole numbers if we're going to have polynomials. Whole numbers in the exponents, whole numbers exponents for polynomials. So exponential functions are not polynomials. That's something useful you can remember. Exponential functions are not considered polynomials, but they're still functions. Um, graphing exponential functions um, you're going to see things like f of x equals b to the power of x. b, again, is our base. It's, it's some number. Um, it's usually greater than 0, or it always, it's always greater than 0, and it's never the number 1. Um, and that base for us, we're going to stick with, we'll have base 2 for our examples. Okay, we're going to stick with just the same base. We're not going to mess around with having a base of 3 or a base of 10 today, just so we can see how these transformations play out. Okay, so our first example here, y equals 2 to the power of x. Let's do ourselves a little table of values here to help us understand the algebra behind the graph. So if you were to put negative 2 in for x into this example number 1, if you were to put in negative 2 for x, your y would be 2 to the power of negative 2, right? That is 1 over 2 to the power of 2. Remember when we had negative exponents in order to get that negative away? Remember our exponent rules? We put that to the bottom of the fraction. So 2 to the negative 2, that's the same thing as 1 over 4. So the point negative 2, comma 1 fourth is on this graph. If you were to put negative 1 in, you'd have 2 to the negative 1, and that would be 1 half, right? That negative exponent pops to the bottom. So the point negative 1, 1 half is on this graph. If we were to put 0 in, we'd have 2 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 0 comma 1 is on this graph. If we were to put 1 in, you'd have 2 to the power of 1. That's 2. 1 comma 2 is on this graph. And of course, 2 to the power of 2, that's 4. 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4 is on this graph. And 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 1, 2, 3 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is on this graph. And so this graph, now these are not the only points in the domain, but obviously they are helpful points to see what's going on in this function. It'll go through those points and on forever in both directions. Now before we assess the table of values down below for that function, I want to compare it to its little brother or sister over here, y equals 2 to the negative x. So keep in mind what happens with 2 to the negative x when we have negative 2 in there. That's 2 to the negative negative 2, right? If we were to plug that in for y. 2 to the negative negative 2. So that's just 2 to the positive 2. 
which is 4. So on example 2, the point negative 2, comma 1, 2, 3, 4 is on this graph. Same thing with when inputting negative 1. If we have 2 to the negative negative 1, that's just 2 to the 1, or 2. So negative 1, comma 2 is on this graph. If you were to put in 0, 2 to the negative 0, well, that, there is no negative 0, it's just 0. So anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 0, comma 1 is on this graph, again. Um, 2 to the negative 1, that's the same thing as 1 over 2. So 1, comma 1 half is on this graph. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, so 2, comma 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3, that's the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive 3, or 1 over 8. So 3, comma 1 eighth, and I know that's hard to see what that is, but I'm not taking a ruler out to grade your paper. So this is a set of points that this function goes through and continues in both directions forever. That 2 is an exponential function. That's just a child of that parent graph on the left. So let's compare and contrast these two graphs. They are both exponentials. The domain of the function on the left is all real numbers. It's negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers, if you will. And the range of this graph, this graph will approach that 0 forever and ever and ever, but not actually reach it. So the range of this graph is 0 to infinity. And this graph will approach this asymptote of y equals 0 forever and ever and ever. Now, similar things are happening on the right. We, too, have a domain of all real numbers. It goes left and right forever. We also have a range of 0 to infinity. The, the y values on that function are from 0 to infinity. And we also have this horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. Now, for all exponential graphs, there is no vertical asymptote. There are never vertical asymptotes for exponential graphs. Now, for increasing and decreasing, on the left, we notice that it is increasing, and it is increasing for its entire domain. And on the right, it is decreasing for its entire domain. Now, let's think about how else these functions can be expressed. It's really interesting to see that if we play with numbers, we could have the exact same graph with two different presentations of it. So instead of declaring the left graph, example number one, as y equals 2 to the power of positive x, you could also express this as y equals 1 half to the power of negative x. So think about that. Remember, that negative power flips your uh, numerator to your denominator and vice versa. And so that graph is exactly the same as y equals 2 to the power of x. Those are the same graph. They will produce the same graph. And you can see that on your graphing calculator or on Desmos. Similarly, on the right, the graph y equals 2 to the negative x power could be expressed as y equals 1 half to the positive x power. So notice that different presentations of these bases and the sign of their exponents can cause the exact same graph. So be careful when you do that and definitely graph, either do a table of values or take a look at your graphing calculator to see how these things are behaving because even if they're not expressed in a traditional manner, they may end up having the same behavior that you had expected. So let's take a look at some common uh, notes that we have about these exponential graphs. The exponential function asymptote is always horizontal you are always going to have a horizontal asymptote with exponential functions. And that horizontal asymptote is always going to be y equals k, whatever k value. If you're shifting left, right, up, down, that up, down shift is going to shift your asymptote. And then your reference point or your starting point is going to be 0, comma, 1. That's the parent graph starting point of 0, comma, 1. So if you are going to shift these graphs left, right, up, down, that point 0, comma, 1 on the parent graph will be shifted left, right, up, down, or stretched. Let's take a moment to discuss the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay. You probably can already tell from these original graphs that this first one is exponentially growing, and the second one is exponentially decaying. 
You've probably seen that in your science classes, or you probably have just seen that, um, you know, just based on the life, uh, life things that you see out in the real world. Just be able to recognize when we have exponential growth or exponential decay. They're both exponential functions. They're just um, behaving slightly differently. Often, if we're trying to look at the algebra to determine if it's growth or decay, it might help to take a look and see that we have a positive whole number base to a positive exponent. That's going to result in a growth. If you've got a fractional base with a positive power or a whole number base with a negative power, you're probably going to see decay. And remember, with those two different um, expressions of the same function, anything that could be simplified to either of those Okay, so you might be able to try to identify just from the algebra if it's growth or decay, but always check to make sure that your instincts are, are serving you right. Okay, so let's look and see how these transformations are going to happen. Just like with everything, we have A values, we have H values, we have K values, and they have the exact same impact as they did on quadratics and cubics and every other function we've seen, square roots, all those functions. So A, that um, term is always in charge of flipping, stretching, or compressing your graph. If A is some other number than 1, you're going to have an impact for a flip, stretch, or compress. H moves you left, right. K moves you up, down. Nothing's changed there. And let's also, it helps to remember that the original reference point for exponentials is 0, 1. So it's just helpful to have that up there. So let's take a look at these. We'll take a look at these in our graphing calculator as well as on Desmos. So if you graph y equals 2 to the power of x plus 1, we need to identify that the a term in this is actually 1. It's an invisible 1. Don't forget that number 2 is your base. That is your base of these exponential powers. That number is being brought to the power of x. So only numbers being multiplied out front, like the invisible 1, can be considered your a term. Okay, So remember, a is not included in the b. h for this particular is negative 1. Remember, we flipped the sign. And since there's nothing going on out here for k, k is 0. So the impact this has first on our reference point, remember, our original reference point was 0, 1. The a term is not stretching or compressing or flipping that, it's just staying the same. The h value is going to move it left 1. Okay, so we're going to move that point left 1 and draw it here. And then the k value is not moving it up or down at all, so it's going to stay there. So our new reference point for this shifted child graph is negative 1, 1. And you can check the algebra on this. If you're not sure that negative 1, 1 is on this graph, Make a little table of values. If you were to put negative 1 into that function algebraically, that means 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 1. That's 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. So that's why the point negative 1, 1 is on this graph. And we can continue um, making a table of values or take a look at our calculator and we can graph this. Our asymptote originally on our parent graph is y equals 0. The k shift is the only thing that will impact an asymptote, uh, a horizontal asymptote. The k shift is in charge of up down. If you were to shift this graph left right, like in this particular one, shifting the y equals 0 line left or right does nothing. It does not impact it at all, right? This line goes forever left and right. So the asymptote y equals 0, a left-right shift doesn't have any impact on it. It's still y equals 0. Only a k shift will change your asymptote from the parent asymptote. So the asymptote is still y equals 0 because it did not shift up or down. And domain of this graph still is all real numbers. All exponential graphs have a domain left and right forever and ever. Range for this particular one is still 0 to infinity, like on the parent graph. We are increasing for the entire domain of this graph. Our end behavior, as x goes to negative infinity, check this out, y approaches 
not negative infinity, it approaches zero forever. It never actually reaches it. It gets to the tiniest fraction. As x goes to positive infinity on the right, y values do actually increase to positive infinity. Let's take a look at what this looks like on our calculators. So when we input this into y equals, we input 2, and then we use the caret symbol to raise it to the power of x plus 1. And then we can take a look at the graph itself. And then we can take a look at a table of values that sits on this graph. So second graph gives you a table of values on this particular graph. And notice those y values will get smaller and smaller and smaller the more left you go on the x's. And then if you go down, you can pull off a couple of clean values to graph on your graph. Uh, negative 2 and a uh, comma a half. Negative 1 comma 1, that was our reference point. 0 comma 2, 1 comma 4. So all of these can be used to help clean up your graph a little bit. So let's see, we, I think we had negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2 is on there. So we can grab a couple more to clean out that graph a little bit more. Let's take a look at the next graph. Different shifts. So still a positive 1 there. Nothing's happening on the flip stretch or compress. H is 0. There's nothing going on here. There's nothing being added or subtracted, so it's 0. And the K shift is a positive 1. So our reference point was 0, 1. We don't shift, flip, or stretch that because of A. We don't move left or right because of H. But we do move up 1 because of K. So now our uh, reference point is 0, 2. And we used to have an asymptote of y equals 0. We are not flipping or um, stretching it. We are not shifting it left to right, which wouldn't have had an impact as well and, at all. But a k value is going to shift this guy up here. Okay, So we're going to shift that entire asymptote up 1 and make that line, that invisible little no-go zone, the fence, y equals 1 because of that k value being 1. Domain on this is still all real numbers. It goes forever left or ever right. That's true of every exponential function. Range on this has shifted slightly. It shifted up, so it's from 1 to infinity. I am still increasing for every x value on this thing. As x goes to negative infinity on the left, y approaches 1. It doesn't get below 1. As x approaches positive infinity on the right, once again, y approaches infinity. If you'd like to clean up this graph and want to do a little table of values, you know that there's an x, y um, combo pair of 0 and 2, right? You can see that um, you can confirm that by saying if I was to input 0 into this function, that's 2 to the power of 0 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1. So that's why we got 2. Let's put another value in here to try to clean this up. Let's try something to the right. If we put 1 in for x, that's 2 to the power of 1 plus 1. That's 2 plus 1, which is 3. So 1, 1, 2, 3 should be on this graph. Okay. Get a couple of them for your graph, just to make it clean, or get them off your calculator, just so that you can show the exponential growth properly, and to confirm the direction of how the data is going, or how the points are going. All right, now let's try a couple of challenge problems. Usually you'll only have one shift, either a left, right, an up, down, or a flip. You usually won't have multiple at the same time, but let's challenge ourselves and look at some of these challenge problems where we have multiple shifts. So for this first one, we actually are messing with a. We've got a negative 1 for a this time. And we have an h of 4 and a k of 0. Our original 0, 1 reference point is now being negatized for the y value. So if we negatize uh, the y value of 1, we get negative 1. So that's the first thing that happens to our reference point is we negatize it. 
And then what we have happen is a shift to the right of 4 because of the H. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So our new reference point is 4, comma, negative 1. If we want to confirm that with algebra, and I encourage you to do so, we can say, hey, if I put 4 in, do I get negative 1 out of this function? Well, let's see. And remember, this is that function is saying negative 1 times 2 to the power of x minus 4. In this case, um, x is 4. So negative 1 times 2 to the power of 0, negative 1 times 1, negative 1. So sure enough, if I put 4 in, I get negative 1 out. So my reference point of 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 is confirmed. Now, asymptote, it used to be y equals 0. Let's see if we've got any shifts here. If we negatize the y value of 0, that does nothing. Negative 0 is still 0. If we shift right 4, that does nothing, so there's no change there. And if we shift up down 0, that doesn't change anything. So our asymptote stays y equals 0. If we would like to have another little value here to help us understand how this thing is acting, we can probably guess, but we can do some algebra here to see how it's acting. Let's put 4, I'm sorry, let's put 5 in as an input and see what happens. So negative 1 times 2 to the 5 minus 4 power. That equals negative 1 times 2 to the 1 power. So that equals negative 2. So 5 comma negative 2 is on this graph. And you can continue this table of values, or you can look at your calculator or Desmos, to see that this is what this function looks like. Its domain is still all real numbers, like all exponential um, functions. Its range, however, the lowest value is negative infinity instead of zero. The smallest value, y value on this is negative infinity, and the largest y value is zero. So that's a change here because of that a value being negative. It's also decreasing for its entire life for all values in the domain. On the left, as x approaches negative infinity forever, y approaches zero forever. On the right, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. It'll go down forever. Okay, so that was some pretty intense shifting. Um, when you have a negative like that, it does flip your graph to the other side of the asymptote. Now let's look at the most challenging problem we have. y equals 3 times 2 is your base to the power of x minus 1 plus 2. So our a is 3 our h is 1, our k is 2. Our reference point has had a lot happen to it. It used to be 0, 1. Then we multiplied the y value by 3. So that makes that 0, 3. Then we moved right 1. Then we moved up 2. So our new value, our new reference point is 1 comma 5. Let's confirm that with algebra. If we were to put 1 in for x, our y value would be 3 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1 plus 2. So that's 3 times 2 to the 0 plus 2. So that's 3 times 1 plus 2. So that's 5. So sure enough, 1 comma 5 is on this graph. So we'll erase all the others and just graph the one that we're left with. That's our reference point. Our original asymptote was y equals 0. The a, the multiplying by 3, well if you multiply y equals 0 by 3, 0 times 3 is still 0, so that doesn't have any impact. If we move right 1, that doesn't have any impact, because that line shifting left-right doesn't have any impact. But that bump up of 2 finally has an impact on this asymptote. So that bump up to y equals 2 is where we end up from an asymptote perspective. We shift up 2. Our domain 
is still all real numbers. Now let me jump to Desmos to show you how this plays out on Desmos just so we can get two views of it instead of looking at our uh, graphing calculator all the time. So our Desmos calculator, and this is of course desmos.com slash calculator, we type y equals 3 times 2 to the power of, and I had to do parentheses around the x minus 1 to make this work, to the power of x minus 1 plus 2. So you see how it played out? The asymptote shifted up 2. If you hover over your graph, it'll tell you where some of these points are. So there's a point here at 0, 3.5. If you come here, it'll tell you what that point is. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. There we go. So if you hover over these graphs, or touch these graphs, it'll tell you some points that you can get instead of doing that second table, right? And of course, 1, 5 is right here. Right? 1 comma 5 is noticed there. So our graph, 0 comma 1, 2, 3 and a half, I'll steal that one since I saw that one there. And I'll graph it there. Our domain, of course, is still all real numbers. That's always going to be true for exponentials. Our range starts at 2. The smallest value it ever gets to is 2. And it never actually gets there. It's a soft bracket. And then we go up to positive infinity for our y values. We have a positive a, so we are increasing our whole life. And it is for all of the values in the domain, all real numbers of the domain. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 2. It never goes lower than 2. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity forever and ever. And we can use a table of values to confirm some of our um, algebra, that 3.5 value that we found off of Desmos. We can ask our algebra as well, or our graphing calculator. So that is graphing translations of exponentials. Go ahead and try your homework and let us know if you have any questions.